I don't think it'll be overly controversial for me to say that Tom Hanks is one of my favorite actors in the, in the world. I just think he's fantastic. The guy can, can play anything. He's done so many different kinds of roles and been great at all of them. I sometimes wonder how he can um, be so versatile as an actor to play these different characters and, and do them all, you know, do them all justice and, and portray them all um, well and convincingly. So Tom Hanks, uh, my hand is off to you, sir. And I just uh, really appreciate your work. Aside from that though, this video is not about Tom Hanks. This video is about public relations and the different roles that people have in public relations. It's very similar to, the, we have to be the Tom Hanks. Public relations people have to be the Tom Hanks in this field because you never know what's going to be thrown at you. There are all different kinds of roles in public relations. It's, it's rarely ever one thing and one person rarely ever has the exact same job as somebody else. Even if they're stepping into that, uh, somebody else's position, it's going to change slightly depending on that person because there are just so many different things involved here. So anyway, with that said, let's take a look at some of the different roles that we commonly find in public relations, in the field of public relations. So um, just again, strictly just looking at, at broad categories of different roles that you might be asked to play uh, in working in the field of public relations. Uh, number one is writer. Uh, public relations people are often called on to write for a variety of circumstances and, uh, and contexts. This could be in the context of just preparing uh, a message for an executive in an organization, helping them put together a speech that they're doing. It could be drafting a, a response to some emergency situation or, or engaging in crisis communication, right? So we could be writing um, for the media in that regard, or we could just be writing for media in promoting a particular um, project, or, or we could be writing for, you know, how are we going to phrase this in the brochure or, you know, something along those lines or on the website. So public relations people are called on to write in a variety of circumstances and for a variety of contexts. So they have to be fairly versatile writers oftentimes. Public relations people are oftentimes also strategic advisors. We discussed in a previous video that public relations really is a management role. It should be a part of those executive decisions and 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 a decision making role, and it should be a strategic advisor. A public relations person oftentimes is asked to see the big picture. How is this you know a choice going to affect our engagement with our audience and how this organization relates to the audience, how the audience views them, or how our public sees that organization? So uh, we're going to be asked to, as public relations people, to offer strategic input at times and think about things from a strategy and strategic perspective. Oh, we're also expected to be marketing communications experts at times, right? How are we going to reach this audience? How are we going to understand this audience? How are we going to uh, best engage with this audience? So a part of the job oftentimes is, you know, has some crossover with marketing. It's not exactly the same. Marketing is different in, in some ways, but there is a lot of crossover here. So there are times when we're going to be called on to, to serve in that role and to at least advise and assist in that role of, of marketing communications and be that person for an organization. And at times we're the crisis manager, you know, we're the, we're the person who is you know, engaging with the public of that organization. And so when there is a crisis, naturally public relations, people are going to be looked to for guidance and, and, and for all those things, right. For doing some writing for engaging in marketing and especially for strategic advice and how we can uh, best navigate this crisis situation. And so uh, public relations, folks can play a large role, an important role in crisis management as well. So you can see there's a lot of, these are just broad categories. There's a lot of specifics within this, and there are other things that we're not really getting into, but these are four of the major categories of roles that people find themselves in, in a public relations sense. So with that, then there comes, you know, the need to have a variety of skills. We need a lot of tools in our tool belt as public relations practitioners. You've got to be able to have a lot of tools in your tool belt and be able to pick the right one and use it skillfully. Right? So, um, so a couple of the broad, again, broad categories of skills, we're not getting into detail here. Uh, we'll have an opportunity to do some of that later, but just broadly looking at what are some of the primary skills involved for public relations people. Um, first of all, media relations. Public relations is not exclusively a publicist role, and it's not always about media relations, but 
that nonetheless is a big part oftentimes of the role of somebody in public relations. You are by default or by design, the media relations person. So if there's an incident or if there's somebody, you know, building those relationships with the media, just in general, in, in order to develop and cultivate that relationship, it's probably going to fall to the public relations person. So you need to have some media relations skills, uh, oftentimes. You may also be called upon to look at and, and develop employee communications because uh, not only does that organization have a story to tell their public, external public through the media and through their relationship with just the community around them, they also have to tell their story internally. You have to communicate who you are and what you expect and things like that with the uh, employees that you have. So um, public relations skills uh, oftentimes are involved or required to have um, what it would take to communicate effectively with employees as well. You're going to need a, a, a mind for research and strategic planning. Again, public, public relations people often serve as strategic advisors. And that means, first of all, being prepared, knowing how to research, doing research, what's the best way to conduct this type of, uh, of, uh, of, plan and to to achieve the goals that we have um, that's going to involve a lot of research and then of course it's going to involve strategic planning how are we best going to get to where we want to go um, that's that's a strategic function and so we have to have that kind of mindset as well so you need the skills of being able to to effectively research and and then also to use that research in order to inform and develop a solid strategic plan uh, finally you're going to need and in, in this day and age, you're going to need some social media skills. And it's sort of part of media relations, but it's not reaching out to a separate organization that would be a media um, outlet. It would be you know, now you're in charge of your own media, the social media, right? And you can use that how you wish. So you have to decide and help your organization decide, okay, what kind of, uh, of tone are we going to have on social media? What kind of information are we going to share? How are we going to best use social media? You really almost have to have any organization. It's going to have to have in this day and age, a social media presence of some sort. So it's good to be intentional about how are we going to use that? What are our goals here? Identifying those, doing the research, and then planning around that and developing effective social media for that organization. And then being able to implement that as well, understanding the different platforms and, and their use and their audience and, and the best way to, uh, to, to, to extend your message and to tell your story using those tools then, uh, which are very, very different. So these are some of the, again, broad categories of skills that you're going to be called on to use as a public relations practitioner. I also want to address that there are a variety of different career paths um, that, that very greatly. So we need to really understand what these different career paths are. They all have positives and negatives, and they're not as clear cut as, as we make them out here, but this is just a way to kind of um, uh, connect with the understanding of, of what these different career paths might involve. So, uh, first of all, for example, you could you could work in a in a public relations agency. So, an organization, a business that is specifically dedicated to public relations, works with external clients. Um, the, some of the advantages here are that first of all, it has a as has a public relations focus. So, you're with people, you're around people who are public relations focused. It's it's you know that are going to understand what that is um, and have the tools probably that you need to 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 do that effectively. So it's going to you know, have an inherent public relations focus when you work for a public relations agency. You also have a larger support network. Oftentimes when you work for an organization, you may be the only public relations person, or you may be in part of a small department, or even if it's a larger department, you know, the, at, at an agency, you're going to, have, again, be surrounded by people who understand what public relations is. That's not always the case when you're a piece of a larger organization, when you're working for an organization or a nonprofit or, or the government or whatever. Um, you're surrounded by people who aren't public relations people. But when you work at an agency, you have that larger support network uh, surrounded by people who are public relations professionals themselves. Um, but one of the downsides and the kind of the negatives is that the market can be less steady. When you work for an agency, you're kind of, you know, stuck with the ups and downs of what the market is and, uh, and, and what your services are worth as a, as an agency. And uh, sometimes, you know, especially in down economic times, uh, having a PR agency can seem like a luxury to a lot of organizations. So the market can be less steady. The work may not be as consistent. And, and so uh, that that's one potential downside of working at an agency, but you know, so again, positives and negatives here, uh, but that's what it kind of get an impression of, of what it would look like to work at an agency.
You also have the opportunity maybe to, to work in corporate public relations, meaning you work for an organization that's not a public relations firm. They're, they're a company that has some sort of other product or service, but then public relations is a part of that organization. And uh, so one positive here is the compensation tends to be better in these types of situations. So um, the money tends to be better in the corporate world. That's probably not surprising. There does tend to be more stability. Uh, you're working for an organization, uh, hopefully that's not as affected uh, by whether that service is a luxury or not. Um, that company sees it as a necessity. And so there may be more stability and not quite as volatile uh, as, it, as it extends to the market in that type of position. The downside is that at a corporation, you're going to have a smaller PR staff. You're not going to have that large support network of people surrounding you who are public relations people. Depending on the size of the organization, you may be the only public relations person there, or you may have a small staff or even a larger staff, but you're going to be a small part uh, of a large organization. Then. And, so, um, and the purpose may be less understood. When you work in an agency, again, when you're surrounded by people who are uh, in public relations and work in public relations, uh, then they understand your function, they understand the value of that. But when you work as part of a larger organization, you can have people there who don't really understand what your job is or what the function of public relations is. They're going to think you're in advertising. Uh, they're going to think you're in marketing or something like that and may not fully understand the role and the importance of public relations. So uh, you may have to battle that. So uh, you may also uh, think about nonprofit work. And there's a lot of re rewarding things about working in nonprofit. You get to work in an area, uh, theoretically, that uh, that provides you with a passion and a purpose. If you're choosing that nonprofit, it's probably because you believe in that cause. So you're, you're, you're going to have a real fire for, for what you're doing, right? And a real belief in what you're doing in a nonprofit. Usually that's the case, right? At a nonprofit, you're probably going to be as part of a small staff. So you're going to have a broad range of activities. If you're somebody who wants to really do everything in the realm of public relations, then a nonprofit can be a great place to do that because you're going to be called upon to do all of these things. You may be the only person there who has that expertise, but you're going to be called on to do a lot of different things as opposed to like at a large corporation, for example, you may be very specific. You may be just the media relations person and that's it. Or you may just be writing and that's it. Uh, or, you know, one of those other things, you may have a very narrow focus in terms of what your role is in public relations in that, in that position. At a nonprofit, you're probably going to be doing a little bit of everything. And so if you like that, that broad range of things, then that could be a good, um, a good fit for you, a good spot for you. At a nonprofit, you're probably also going to have fewer resources, though. That's the downside. Nonprofits don't, by definition, make a lot of money, usually. So you're probably going to be a little more limited in terms of the money that you have to spend. Your budget's going to be smaller. You're not going to have all the fancy tools and the fancy technological bells and whistles and things. You're going to have to make do with less at a nonprofit, typically. So you're going to have fewer resources. But again, there's a, you know, the, you got to weigh all that out and decide if that's for you. Uh, one last career path that you could look at is with the government. The government is a large, large organization, and there are a lot of opportunities there. Lots of people work for the, the government at, at all different levels, federal, state, local. So there are lots of opportunities there in the government. There is fair stability in the government. The government's not going away, theoretically. You know, I wouldn't think so. So that, that uh, there's going to be jobs there, and they're probably going to want people in those roles and those in those you know public relations type roles those community relations roles public information roles so there's fair stability there there's also the idea of public service if that appeals to you if that's something that, uh, that is important to you and, and it certainly is important overall and if that's something you feel passionate about again there's that there's that purpose and that passion uh, that's involved with public service that can be very rewarding about working with the government on the downside, again, you like a nonprofit, you're going to have a smaller staff. You, you, you may be the only person in that in that that works in that area, um, in that particular department, um, or there may be one or two other people. It's probably going to be a smaller staff, though, and you're going to be more limited in scope. The government doesn't do the broad range of of public relations uh, activities that uh, maybe a, a corporation would, or or that you would get into with an agency, or especially in a nonprofit. You're going to be more narrowly focused to things like public information um, and, and those types of activities, uh, developing those types of relationships with just the community. So it's more limited in scope, but uh, but that may appeal to you as well.
So there are lots of different ways that you can get involved in public relations and lots of different things that you can do with them, right? So uh, hopefully now you see that public relations involves wearing a lot of different hats. Public relations practitioners can wear a lot of different hats. You re it requires a lot of different skills and there are different roles that we play, right? So ideally as a public relations practitioner, you will have the opportunity uh, in finding the right fit for you to become kind of the Tom Hanks of public relations, right? And excel at, at those different roles and, and excel in one that is the right fit for you. If you have questions about uh, the public relations role or the different roles that people have, anything related to public relations at all, please feel free to shoot me an email. I'd love to talk to you there. In the meantime, I hope you have a better understanding of the variety and the different uh, roles that that uh, that people play in public relations and where you might find a good fit within that.